again from Normandy and it's sunny. In fact, it's going to be 28 today. So that's beautiful Indian summer we've got here at the moment. And I thought I'd look at co-parenting because that's been on the rise here in the forest garden. On my site, I go into more detail about this. But here's just a little film about it, just as a taster. And that even when you've got the best of mummies, you sometimes do need a little help. As always, I'm very interested in looking at original behaviours of the wild jungle fowl and seeing if they equate to the behaviours in the garden. Over the years, I've noticed more and more co-parenting. Part of that, I think, this year because of the drought. So we had less leaf on the trees and bushes or in the canopy and therefore more danger from predators. You can see that with these two hens that co-parented these five chicks. They've certainly divided the labour so that one is always doing the foraging and the other one, whilst the chicks were young, was always on the lookout. As the chicks aged, they became more relaxed in this and they both started to do the foraging. This was an interesting case in that we had three hens sit together, they hatched two chicks and definitely there's a division in hierarchy. The grey blue hen, eventually she was actually left out of the co-parenting. There was a young cockerel who tried to pair bond with the two black hens, but that was a bit of a failure because he was obviously more interested in food. And this again is behavior of the jungle fowl in that it's a way that the younger males can bond with females if they accept to take on a hen with chicks. And it's happening here quite often. Because I was worried about the predator problem we've had this year, I actually had to put the chicks in a little run at the start, but already you can see the cockerels are coming around and trying to make bonds with both the hens. Sometimes it's a case of co-parenting in tandem, but as well, and this again is something to do with jungle fowl, is that they keep their chicks for much longer than domestic hens, often three months or more. So here you've got some of my hens who will keep their chickens for quite a long time, but some that won't. And I often find that the chick will then look for another mother, usually within the same hen house. She has to be broody, obviously, and they will start by going to them at night, getting underneath them, and if they're accepted, then usually that mother will stay with them during the day. So there's a, a definite idea of belonging to a flock and that the flock will help out. Some of my hens and cockerels are actually pair bonded anyway, so when they have chicks, they do stay together. And sometimes, it's me. As in the case of this little chick, he had hypothermia and he stayed with me and I looked after him for two days and then he was returned to his mother. This is the mummy who's looking after the chicks that get cold at night. This is actually her chick. <laughs> Here's my little hypothermia chick. And this is one that's, that's small. He's from a brood of five and he, and he actually can't get up the tree at night, whereas the others can. So I just put them with her and she accepts them. And I was a bit worried when I put the big one because I thought, okay, the little one, she could mistake that one for hers. But all she did when I put him in, she got a really big piece of straw, put it over her back almost like, well, this one's going to take some camouflaging. So she's absolutely brilliant. Not every hen will accept other people's chick, other hen's chicks. 
but this one definitely will. She's only grumpy at the moment because it's breakfast time and she wants her breakfast. She knows she's going out there. Hope you've enjoyed this film and please feel free to comment and make observations. As always, thanks for watching.